Hey, welcome back to another episode of uh, Pass Blaster. We are back here in the lab. Uh, gonna start doing some actual board repairs, or at least attempts to do some board repairs. Uh, so we're actually here, you can see we're at the lab here, uh, in my garage. We're gonna be working on some stuff. Um, kinda just wanted to walk you through the current testing setup of tools that I have, uh, and talk about the first board that we're actually gonna try to repair. Um, so I just got done uh, setting this up. It's still a little messy. But we'll go ahead and walk through the tools and I'll kind of show you uh, what the board's currently doing, hopefully what we're going to get it to do, and our long-term plans for the actual board. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board. Alright, so what we have here is a CPS-1, uh, Street Fighter 2. You can probably see here, Street Fighter 2. Uh, hopefully the wind's not too loud, but uh, this board was in that lot of boards that I picked up a while back um, that had a bunch of issues with it. So this one... Uh, I believe the guy had taken all the ROMs out and uh, actually washed it with a hose uh, to clean it off. The board's actually super clean. You can see it's actually still kind of shiny and everything here. But because of that, I don't think he dried it out properly. So some of the ROM sockets here, I don't know how well this camera is going to pick it up. Some of the ROM sockets actually have some corrosion. So you can see how shiny the board is and how dull those sockets are. So we're going to go ahead and replace all of those sockets for the 40 pins, all the sockets for the 32 pins and the sockets for these little RAM chips. But that's it, the project, but here's what we're actually working with. So I've got a little JAMA extension here. You can kind of see it goes over to this little guy here. Um, again, I hope my fan's not super loud, but here's a cool little super gun I picked up off eBay. Um, it runs off of a standard little, you know, uh, ATX power supply. But it powers in here, and then over here it's got little uh, DB15 Neo Geo ports that I've got a controller for. But it does pretty much everything on the board here. It's got power, it's got a voltage meter, it's got audio out. It does output SCART, which I have running, um, kind of snaking back here up to our little PVM monitor here. Uh, my little service light's on. Uh, runs there. And basically we just come down here and we power up the board here. Kind of see it boots on there. Shows us our voltage is right at 5 over here and then if we come up here to the actual PVM you can kind of see some of the issues that it's having. So it does boot but you can see that a lot of the text is completely wonky, missing things, colors are completely off. Uh, super weird, that's the, that's the refresh rate of the PVM but all the colors are weird and, and it's, it's messed up. So I think a lot of that's due to these dirty sockets. So we're going to go ahead and pull everything off of this board. Uh, EP ROMs are going to come off, we're going to desolder all those sockets which is going to suck but It'll be a start to something that we can work on there, and then probably what we'll do is reflow everything. Uh, if any of those surface mount chips look dry, we'll go ahead and reflow them with the uh, hot air rework here to see if we can't get this guy back up and running. And eventually, what we want to do is we want to convert this to a uh, either like a Ghouls and Ghosts or a um, Strider or something like that because I've got a Super Turbo board, multi TPS2, and all that. So Street Fighter 2 is cool, but I've got a bunch of those. Right? But you can see here some of the graphical errors that we're getting. Um, and I think a lot of it is because of um, just those dirty sockets and ROMs. So the CPU's running. Game's running, so that it's it's kind of alive. But we do need to get that. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and pull these chips out um, and lay them out. And make sure the legs are all clean. And then we'll pick it up once that's done and we start to remove these sockets. Alright, so we've got the main board taken apart. So I've got the bottom board there, I've got the top board sitting over here right now. Um, here's all the ROMs, and as you can kind of see, probably maybe not, the legs are completely filthy on these things. So before I solder and replace anything, what I'm going to do is just go through and clean these legs off, put everything back together, make sure it's reseated, uh, and just see if we get any difference on the PCB. I don't think we will. I think some of these sockets are kind of grody. You can kind of see some, even these little RAM ones here. Some of them are bad, but some of them are, are really bad. So gonna go ahead and clean everything up and put it back together and then we will power it up and see if any uh, anything happens all right so we got most everything back in um, I did notice here on one of the ROM chips this is 36 B did notice that you can see how dirty it is but on this side here you can see there that one of the legs is actually broken so I'm gonna go ahead and grab another chip hopefully I've got a uh, C or was that a 27 C 27C 1001, I think I've got one of those. I'm going to go check that, reprogram it, and pop it back in, and then we'll power it up. Alright, so we got everything back together. Unfortunately, I did not have a uh, 1001, 
So I went ahead and barred a leg off of a dead chip and kind of soldered it back onto that and confirmed it is making connection. Got everything back together. I don't really think anything is going to be changed. I think these sockets are just bad and the whole board needs to be recleaned and reflowed and all brand new uh, sockets. But we're going to go ahead and power it up here. I got everything plugged back in and power this guy on. No, nah, it's still doing the exact same thing. Okay, so worth a try to clean it up just to see if anything changed, but looks like we either got some bad components or um, bad sockets. So uh, pick this up another day for me, but it'll be pretty instant for you. I'm going to go ahead and retake everything apart again, uh, order that replacement EP ROM, and start removing all of these sockets from the board and start recleaning these things and reflowing and all that fun stuff. So a lot of soldering coming my way. But we'll pick this up when this board is naked. So I'm here working on some other boards. I'm waiting for some sockets to show up in the mail, which hopefully they'll be here in the next hour or so. Um, but this is another board I picked up, King of Dragons, and when it boots, it boots to a bunch of weird like graphics. I see the I see the game logo and things like that, but it's not playing right. So I noticed that some of these over here, these ROM sockets are kind of gross and have like a weird. It almost looks like something like dripped on it and kind of like worked its way down. You can see like every other one is kind of messed up. The board itself is super clean, but I pulled one of the CPUs out up here, and you can see that some of the legs here are just gone, and on the actual chip itself, I've been able to clean the legs up, but you can, I left some on there so you can see where it was. Um, but you can see the, the residue, so I'm assuming that that has at least something to do. So I have a bunch of new 40-pin sockets coming in. Um, once that gets here today, I'm going to work on desoldering all these at least the ones that it used is probably these eight or whatever to start with and kind of see if it boots up with just cleaning the ROMs and reseat and everything. So it's the third CPS-1 board that we're looking at, two Street Fighter 2s and a King of Dragons. So once those get in, I will pull them out and we'll update you guys. All right, so we've got these eight uh, ROM sockets out over here. Um, tried to clean the board up a little bit. There was a little bit of dirt. There is some still in the holes. I'm going to clean those up before I reflow them and put the new sockets in. Um, I did notice, I don't know if, again, the camera's going to pick it up, I did notice that some of these traces looked a little weird, but I did go ahead and continuity check all of the traces, and they are still fine. So we're going to go ahead and remove this little guy, and then these three over here, and then work up towards these big 40-pin ones. So I'll keep going. Alright, so we got all the uh, sound ROMs, as well as the uh, graphics and everything over here. I just want to kind of show you what we're dealing with. So I did put one in. You can see how shiny and new that socket is compared to the ones that were in there. So we're going to go ahead and finish up all these, all these. And I'm just going to just see if we get any difference before I pull these. I think it's 12 i got to pull out up here. So this just takes forever. But we're going to get those in, plug them in, and see if we get any difference. And I will update this once we are done putting these in. Hey, so we're back after uh, doing some repair on these PCBs. Um, good news and bad news on the Street Fighter 2 board. Uh, good news is um, we got some progress. We actually swapped all the sockets, and now what we have is the proper colors, but the game's still kind of all garbly. Um, so we have to kind of look at the CPUs now, see if they're running right, look at all the RAM. Um, so unfortunately right now my scope isn't hooked up, so I will have to kind of revisit that at another day. I did want to show you some of the other stuff that I've been working on here. Um, I have had some success in getting some other boards back up. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just turn the camera here real quick. Make sure this is set right. And over here, you can see I got a double dragon running. Um, so the board's here, very farm fresh, has not been cleaned up yet. Um, just kind of reset the sockets and clean the legs a little bit, but I got to clean the actual board. This one has some sound issues. So the sound section over here will have to get replaced, the caps, uh, things like that. They're really crunchy and dirty, so that'll probably help with it. Um, beyond that, I also have over here two Captain America boards that I got fully back up and running. You can see they're still really dirty, but these were kind of working. Some had graphic issues. Some had, or One had graphic issues. One was completely dead. Uh, but luckily, it was just a couple reflows and, and uh, receiving the ROMs, cleaning them. I had to reburn one ROM. Um, but those are two Captain America and the Avengers boards fully back up. Um, so not a super exciting episode, but um, that's going to pretty much do it for now. Um, I want to get this up so you guys have some content to look at. Um, but in the future, we're going to go back to the Street Fighter 2 boards. Um, I've got two of those, King of Dragons, that we're going to work on. And we've got a couple other little weird ones. we got some Mortal Kombat 2s that we have to go through and try to find some sound boards for. But um, 
we'll pick that up next time on that. Now that the bench is kind of up and running, we'll do some surface mount stuff and STV. I got like 50 boards that we got to work on. But thank you guys for tuning in. I'll try to get another episode out either later this week or next week. I know I've been slacking, but life gets in the way and sometimes you got to do some other stuff. But thanks again, guys, for watching, and I'll catch you next time.